Hey, let's catch up with some Spurs news and notes, and then look back at Stefan Capsule's play during the Summer League. You are Locked On Spurs, your daily San Antonio Spurs podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome back to Locked On Spurs on the Locked On NBA Network. I'm your host, Jeff Garcia, Spurs writer for Cans 5 San Antonio. Glad to have you all back. Hope everyone's having a great work week. And we thank you for making Locked On Spurs your first listen every single day. Free and available wherever you get podcasts, iTunes, Cans 5 Plus app. What else you got? Spotify? Spotify? And what else? iTunes? I mean, seriously, if you pick something, we are there every single day. And y'all, y'all always make the wise choice. Coming to Locked On Spurs for all things silver and black. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. This summer, FanDuel is hooking up all customers with a boost or a bonus daily. That's right. There's something for everyone every day, all summer long. Visit FanDuel.com to get started. What are we talking about today? See it on your screen. I don't need to tell you, but in case you're listening on the audio side of things, we're going to be uh, discussing some quick Spurs news and notes real quick. Just catch up some things you may have missed. And then bring in our guest, Mike Jimenez from the Animal City Sports uh, Cast Network over on YouTube. We're going to be looking back at Stefan Castle's play through three games of Summer League action. More of that in a bit. And then uh, catch up with you guys and see what y'all are talking about over at the Lockdown Spurs YouTube page. Let's get into it. So y'all already know already, Stefan Castle is out for the remainder of Summer League play. Uh, he suffered a wrist injury on uh, his right wrist, that is, uh, during the first Vegas Summer League game versus the Blazers. Had a nasty spill. Uh, but uh, the Spurs decided to shut him down, a cautionary move. It's nothing serious, nothing, you know, disastrous. He didn't break it. But they're just taking all extreme precautions. Don't blame him. He is the number four pick through three summer league games. He looked pretty good. And yes, I know summer league, but you know, we'll, you know what? We're going to be talking about that in just a few minutes. But there you go, just to catch you up on that. In others, Spurs news. Hey, look, y'all fans of Netflix's uh, King of Collectibles series. Kind of follows the golden um, auction collectible company and, you know, when they put up sports memorabilia. Well, the Spurs Coyote, the original Tim Dirk, uh, he was a, a guest on a couple of episodes where he offered uh, his uh, championship rings uh, to be sold on auction. Well, the 2014 ring that he won, uh, well, that auction is over and he netted himself over $34,000 at the golden auction. That is incredible. Yeah, even though, um, you, you know, it's just, uh, you know, I don't know if I could do that. You know, I could part way with something that valuable. But nevertheless, he did. He sold it. If y'all never saw that episode, on, uh, go check it out. It's on Netflix. It's pretty interesting because he has a briefcase and he t opens it up. And he has the original Paul hands of the Cowdy, the original uh, jersey that he wore. And it has that ABA vibe to it. And so much more. He displays all his championship rings. You get a up close uh, look and personal. But yeah, over $34,000. That's a lot of money, you know. But I don't know. I don't know if I, if I was given that original kind of uh, ring from the organization. I don't know if I could part with it. That, that'd, be, that'd be interesting. Hey, in other news. Oh, quickly, by the way, if you want to check it out, it's on kensfy.com. See a picture of it as well. In other Spurs news, Tony Parker, his French national team jersey number nine, is officially retired. It's done. His uh, French jersey will never be worn by Team France in international play. Congratulations to Tony Parker. Well, well deserved. And finally, in uh, other Spurs news, Kelton Johnson. If you're in San Antonio, listen up. He will be hosting a free, yes, free basketball camp in San Antonio on July 25 through 26 from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. It'll be, and again, if you're in San Antonio, at Cornerstone High School, located at 17702 Northwest Military Highway, 78275. Uh, again, the best part, it's free to attend. It's for young athletes ages 8 through 15. Uh, I talked to the organizers. Uh, There's going to be free food, free T-shirts. Uh, what else? Got free shorts. Uh, not only is, is Kelton hosting it, you got Caleb, his brother, he'll be there. You'll have an opportunity to take a photo with Kelton. It's really, really good. Just more proof that Kelton is there looking out for the San Antonio community and beyond. He's um, been hosting basketball camps in his home state of Virginia. He did one recently in Laredo. So, again, Johnson is always thinking of San Antonio first. I think believe, and even this past uh, holiday season, he hosted a turkey drive for Thanksgiving, a Christmas present drive uh, for kids in San Antonio. So, yeah, Kelton doing 
doing well by San Antonio. All right, there you have it. Some quick Spurs news and notes. Up next, Michael Jimenez and I, we're going to be discussing Stefan Castle. Looking back at his three games that he played at Summer League, what did we like? What didn't we like? Should we pump the brakes a bit? We're going to be discussing that and so much more up next right here on Locked On Spurs. First, I want to talk to you about eBay Motors, passion, drive, and patience. That is the winning formula for championships and also keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. Superchargers, they got it. Roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, so much more. They have it. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has you covered. With over 122 million parts to choose from for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with the eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber. You're not burning cash. With all the parts you need and the prices that you want, it's easy to turn your car into the MVP and bring home huge wins. Keep your ride or die alive. You want to go to ebaymotors.com. That's ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay guaranteed fit is only available to U.S. customers. Hey, if you're also in San Antonio you want to go to Muslinger's drive Through Coffee, go there right now. 2404 Thousand Oaks Drive. That's located in the 281 and 1604 area. They got it all. They got mini donuts. But you didn't think I was going to say that. Yes. Coffee Place has the mini donuts. Mudslinger has you covered. They got dairy-free, uh, well, dairy alternative drinks. They got caffeine-free drinks. They have the signature drink called the Mudslinger. They have lattes. They have tons of coffee for you to choose from. Their menu is great. Their staff is friendly. They are a proud local sponsor of Lockdown Spurs and a proud community member of San Antonio, giving San Antonio the best drinks in the city. Again, go there right now. They're open every single day from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. Follow them on social media at Muslinger SATX on all platforms. Hey, they also have the Lightning Bolt series that includes the Alien, which is a made in honor of Victor Wimbayama. It's, it's really good, by the way. You should try it. Just a heads up, they're going to be losing, using uh, Lotus Energy. Now, they'll have Red Bull in, on hand if you want it replaced, but the default will be Lotus Energy. Seven power plant extracts. Pretty much comparable to Red Bull. Gives you the same effects, but again, with seven power plant extracts. They, hey, seriously, it's it's really delicious. It allows you to have the flexibility, them to have flexibility to make new drinks. Again, that'll be the default, but if you want Red Bull, they'll have that for you. Go to Muslinger's drive through Coffee, 2404 Thousand Oaks Drive, open every single day from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. San Antonio, go there right now because life is too short for bland coffee. The Jedi uses the Force. To subscribe to Locked on Spurs, pass on what you have learned. And joining us is Michael Jimenez. Make sure to follow him on X at MJ Acquired Taste, part of the Animal City Sports Podcast Network on YouTube. And looking kind of fresh today. Look at that. I got a new haircut. Dropped a little poundage there. Looks like you got a little fresh little shirt on. What's going oh. on, Jimenez? Oh, I'm looking good and feeling good, my man. How you doing? Doing all right, man. Look at you, man. How much? How much weight have you lost? uh since about a year and a half ago about 17 pounds wow 17 pounds so it, it, it's a yo-yo but it's it's all on its way back down right now so hey as long as you keep it as long as you keep it moving as long as you keep it moving in the right way hey he made us gonna brag about his show that's on the animal city sports and podcast network later on in this show but as you can tell he is ready to go to work so we gotta let him go asap hey he made us, uh news came out over the weekend that stefan castle spurs rookie guard is out for the remainder of summer league that's it we won't see him in action until training camp preseason nevertheless we have a three game sample size he played two games at the california classic one game at the vegas uh, summer league overall thoughts overall impressions oh man i'm in love i, I am in love. love with the spurs rookie so much so that i've already purchased my official Stefan Castle jersey. It is on its way over to my house in West Bear County. I, I've i been telling people for months, and you know that I came out locked on Spurs back yes, in January, have. back in February. I could yes, pull out did. receipts where I was saying yes, he did. He the, has the, the, Spurs, the Spurs player that they needed to get in the draft was Stefan Castle. And now we're seeing it. Now we're seeing what's there. And I know a lot of detractors are going to come out there and say, yeah, but he shot like 35, 36% from the field. I don't care. I don't care. The shot looks good. The way he gets into the lane, dare I say, reminds me of Luka Doncic a little bit. The way that he gets mm. in the lane, it's a little bit LeBronish. What he's doing is when he gets into the lane, he goes around a pick, he gets a defender behind him, and then he uses his big body 
to to to, to basically deflect that guy and keep him from behind. What ends up happening is that draws fouls. What ends up happening is is that it allows him to have a clean shot if he's not being fouled. This is stuff we see from Luca. This is stuff we see from Giannis. This is stuff that we see from LeBron James. And we're seeing this from a very, very young player. I know it's against summer league talent. Yeah. But what he's got in his bag offensively, and then the question is, can he play offensive? Can he play point guard? Those passes are crisp, man. Mm-hmm. The, the, the the IQ that he has on the offensive side of the ball, I would say that the worst case scenario is we got Drew Holiday. Now I'm looking at, yeah. well, what is the best case scenario? Because that's going to be exciting to figure out. Yeah, Castle in three games, a small sample size. And you're right. It is against summer league competition. These are guys that likely are not going to be attached on a, an NBA team, likely G League bound or maybe overseas bound. But Jimenez. In those three games, it was the intangibles that stood out for me. Yes, I know he dropped 20-plus points in one game against the Blazers, and he looked really good out in Sacramento. But the intangibles, one, control of the game. He controlled the game at his pace, at the way he pushed it. Two, very even keel, didn't get flustered. You didn't really see him lash out at calls or get overly excited about big, big plays. He played with poise, and I think that's going to be needed for the point guard spot um, moving forward, if he does play point guard, and that's a good question. Based on what you saw, is he a point guard? Because remember, that was kind of the thing coming out of the draft. Is he a point guard? Is he an off guard? He didn't get that run in, in uh, UConn. You know, can he do it? Do you think he can play one or both positions? I think he can play both. And he had mentioned in the, in the past that UConn showcased him as a combo guard because that's what they needed him to be. But he was saying, hey, man, in high school, I was a point. I was able to run the offense. And he seemed so confident in there. The first summer league game, they didn't have him run the point. They had him play off guard. And in the second and third game he played, he was playing more of a point. Uh, he seems so at ease with himself. There's a, there's a certain calmness by which he plays. Don't get me wrong. It's intense what he's doing. He's getting those crisp passes in there. He is crashing the boards, getting five or six. It's very similar to DeJounte Murray back in the day, somebody who likes to crash the boards. He might be able to get a stat line if he is a starting point guard of, you know, 27 and 7, which I'll take all day, every day. The guy gets sure. into the lane, he knocks down free throws, uh, three pointers. Again, that's going to be the, the one thing he needs to improve on, but the shot does not appear to be broken. I am no. so excited no. by Stefan Castle. I haven't been this excited yeah. about a rookie in over a decade. I mean, I know we have Wemby, don't get me wrong, but Wemby was right, a generational yeah. player. That that was kind of a given. But I'm talking about right. a non-generational player. I haven't been this excited in a long time. Well, according to the Spurs, again, for those of you who do not know, um, Stefan Castle suffered a right wrist sprain uh, versus the Blazers. That was against game one of the Vegas Summer League. He took a nasty yeah. fall. It was a bad, bad fall. Uh, so the Spurs did say it is not a serious injury. It's just, just a precautionary move. Now, he was wearing a wrist splint wrap, I should say, uh, in the uh, Summer League game two. But, again, the Spurs said, no, it's fine. He's, he's, not, he's not broken. It's not a surgery needed. It's just a cautionary move. Against the Blazers, he meant as though 22 points, four assists, five rebounds in 29th minutes. And you look at what he did at the California Classic. In two games, he averaged 15 points per game including 36% shooting from the field, six rebounds, and four assists per game. Again, the shot. You're not the only one who says that his shot needs work. Popovich said during an interview on ESPN Summer League uh, broadcast that the shot is still needs work. Do you think he will be the starting point guard once the shot falls down, which means maybe he could be coming off the bench for the entire rookie season? Well, I think whether he starts or not, he's going to get starter minutes. And I don't mean to cut you off here because basically what you got really is just kind of like Trey Jones for now. Trey Jones can get you a 15 oh, points. Oh, no. Hang no, on. No, no, Let no. me finish. No, no, but no. But they're both, they're both shots. Are, I'm talking about right now at this very moment. Popovich said his shot is off. You said his shot is off. But he can facilitate. He can penetrate. Uh just like Trey Jones can to a degree. So with that being said, will he be the starting point guard once the shot falls down? They're in different leagues, man. Uh, Trey okay. Jones uh, does not have anything on Stephon Castle because, you know, we're talking about the offensive side of the ball, and, and Trey Jones obviously has had struggles 
uh, outside of 15 feet um, and is not that good of a three-point shooter. I understand that comparison. The difference, though, is that Stephon Castle is a lockdown defender on the one, two, and potentially on the three as well, whereas Trey Jones can't play defense very well. So just simple, just simply by the fact that what Stephon Castle brings to the table defensively makes him far head and shoulders above what Trey Jones does. And Trey Jones has proven himself to be an NBA player, has proven himself to be worthy of, of, of minutes. Uh, but Castle's already better. He's going to be better than Trey Jones right out the gate. Uh, I like what Trey Jones has done offensively. Like you said, he can go get 15, 16 points. He can go out there and dish out five dimes, six dimes. I get that. He has a really good turnover to uh, assist a turnover ratio. Uh, but Castle is a more complete player. He's a bigger player. I mean, the, the presence of having somebody who's 6'6", six, six, not only 6'6", six, six, but what is Castle, 215, 220? I mean, the guy's yeah. a bulky player as well. Yeah, he's big. And when you, have, when you have a player like that compared to Trey Jones, he dwarfs him in size. He's a mm-hmm. defensive uh, stopper as well. Yeah, uh, I think that the that the minutes are going to go to Stefan Castle right away. I think being a starter, I mean, it's kind of like Manu. I mean, Manu wasn't a starter, but Manu got mm-hmm. starter minutes. That's what we might see with Castle. And by the way, one other thing, have we noticed that the picks three and four in the draft this year, Reed Shepard and Stefan Castle, and I yep. mentioned this a long time ago on my podcast. I mentioned this on Locked on Spurs. That the one and two players in the draft, Reese Arche and Saar, were not ready for the NBA. The ones that were NBA ready were Castle and Reed Shepard. And uh, so far in the summer league, it's it's holding to be true. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Yeah, those two guys are looking uh, heads above the rest right now. We'll see what happens when the real games begin, when the NBA regular mm-hmm. season starts. You know, the you know, I know the Spurs made the move, cautionary move, just to set them out for the rest of the summer. I would have loved to see him play against his draft classmates. Risha Shea, you know, and whoever this Spurs, I think the Spurs got the Pelicans next. So just to see him play against, and I get it, it's summer league, but just some sort of ups, uptick in competition, just to get yeah. him ready for the league. That's one one drawback of this uh, thing. And obviously, too, getting just a, a use of the NBA style of play. I get that. But more on uh, Castle here, who was out for the remainder of the, uh, ba- of the just summer league uh, period, Popovich. Which is mentioned, he had a lot of good to say about Castle. Here's what he said uh, to ESPN. He says, quote, I love his seriousness for such a young kid. I love his pace. You see his expression never changes. He doesn't go too fast. He doesn't go too slow. He reads the situations. He's going to be a quick study, Jimenez. I think uh, he'll get to play on the court pretty quickly. So Popovich is a fan. He projects that Castle is going to get considerable NBA minutes, but would you be surprised if he takes his talents to Austin for uh, a few days? Not one day, not one game, okay. not one day. Uh, Castle is already one of the five best players on the team. One of the six best players on the team. Um, we look, we look back in time, Jeremy Sohan who was the number nine overall pick a few years ago, uh, played starter 53 out of 56 games for his rookie season. Uh, so the idea that Pop doesn't play rookies anymore, uh, the number nine overall pick got, got got run, and he didn't have a really good shot at the time. And now you have Stefan Castle, who is more NBA ready today than what Jeremy Sohan was a few years ago. So I don't think he's going to go to Austin. Now, look at the word that, that Pop used there. He used the word pace. Isn't that one thing that a lot of rookies struggle with, that the game mm-hmm. is too fast for them? Yep. He looked so measured. He looked like a man among boys uh, in, in the last couple of weeks of summer league games because the pace by which he plays, they're not. he's not playing at the, at the speed or at the pace of what other people are trying to do. He's playing at his own pace, and that just shows the savviness. My God, the Express got a good player in this guy. I mean, and he's locking down defenders offensively. He's showing some moves over there that are very, very, very veteran savvy like. Mm-hmm. And if he can develop that bag and he's just as good as what he is offensively as he is defensively, man, this is gonna be a special player. Yeah, absolutely. Uh you know, before we uh, uh shift gears to the second segment here, but overall, I like what I see out of Castle. I don't know, I I'm not gonna give him an A plus for the summer league because I want some room for growth here. Yeah, I want to see that shot go, get better. I you know I, I, you know, he did turn the ball a bit, but I, I get it. You know, 
you know, it is the summer league and maybe they're experimenting with him a few times with certain, certain things. Fine. I'm going to give it a solid B plus. What do you think? Yeah, I think B plus, B plus is solid. Uh, I know a lot of people are trying to, to, to poke holes at it by saying, Oh, well he shot 36%. He right. shot this from three or whatever the yeah, case he played against be. team China. Yeah. Right. And, and you look at it and you know, he, he's playing with players that he literally just met like a couple of weeks ago. There's no cohesiveness among on, on that team. And those, those games where he had five or six assists, he should have had eight or nine bunch yeah. of blown layups, miss wide open shots. Uh, if he was doing those plays and setting up NBA quality players, if he was setting up Harrison Barnes, if he was setting up uh, Devin Vassell for a lot of those plays, Wimby for those plays, he would have gotten a mm. nine, 10 assists easily. Oh, easy, uh, so yeah. I, I look I look at his stat line and I, and I take it for what it is. It was a summer league game with summer league talent, but it's also the ability to understand that uh, it's not like he had rapport with any of these guys. I doubt he even knows all their names. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Then again, you know, he also sat out one game at the California Classic. So yeah, you know, there's still some familiarity with the Spurs system. It was it was pick up ball. And, it was pick up ball in front of thousands of people. That's what basically, it was. Basically, yeah. Basically, it's what it was. Yeah. But for a pickup ball games, you know, he played pretty well. I think the Spurs got themselves a gem. He and Wimby, they'll get their chemistry going. Uh, not only just him with Wimby, but the rest of the squad. You know, you talk about pace. Uh, one last thing. Cass already knows how to pay, play with pace than even a guy like Blake Wesley. What's Blake Wesley struggling with? Pace. He only plays at one mm-hmm. speed. He's gotten better, uh, but he's not there yet. Castle's already there, so... Again, another point guard on the Spurs roster that he's looking like he might be ahead of in minutes and uh, the future in San Antonio. He is Mike Jimenez. Make sure to follow him on X at MJ Acquired Taste. When we get back, we're going to talk about you guys. Locked on Spurs fans in the comments. You guys are leaving. That's next. I want to talk to you about FanDuel. You want to go to FanDuel right now, create an account, do what you got to do, but become a member of FanDuel. Look, you love sports. I love sports. We never want them to stop. But we can continue having fun and getting all the action over with FanDuel. FanDuel lets you keep the sports going whenever you want. All you got to do is open up the app, dream up bets, and in no time, well, hopefully you'll be winning. I hope so, too. This summer, FanDuel is hooking up all customers with a booster or a bonus daily. You heard that right. There's something for everyone every day all summer long. Again, hooking up all customers with a booster or a bonus daily. Can't go wrong with that. You want to go to FanDuel.com right now. Start making the most out of your summer. Whatever you got to do, put it on your mobile device. Go to the website. Create an account. Easy to use. Very intuitive. Not complicated. Make your picks quick. Bet on spreads, parlays. I mean, think of something. Par, uh, you know, FanDuel will have it there for you. Again, go to FanDuel.com right now. Start making the most out of your summer. FanDuel is the official sports betting partner of Major League Baseball. And we're back right here on Lockdown Spurs with Mike Jimenez, who apparently is in the heavens right now. How are you doing up there, Jimenez? Oh, it looks great, man. I'm like that Bone Thugs and Harmony video from back in the day. Got the heavens behind me. Look at Jimenez, surrounded by nature, <laughs> look, new haircut, <laughs> lost some weight in the heavens. Life is pretty good for Mike Jimenez. You see him on your screen right there, and below him you see his X handle. Make sure to follow that right now. Hey, Jimenez, it's time to talk about some Lockdown Spurs fans and their comments that they're leaving at the YouTube page. Let's dive into them. And the first one is, Jimenez, you're like you're going to like this one. It's from Gooseby Gooseby. Great name. Uh, he has a little comment for GM Brian Wright. He says, he hasn't done nothing. The Spurs are still a 22-25 to 25 win team. What do you think about that? You know, Gooseby is saying, like, let's pump the brakes on Brian Wright. I mean, I get it. Uh, I was off the Brian Wright train for the past four, five, six years. Okay, so I've been very, very critical of Brian Wright and what he's done because he's been collecting picks and not doing much with them, right? Uh, right. But I will say this, though. This offseason is the first offseason that I would give him a solid A, A- minus on for what he's brought to the team. Do I think the Spurs are a, a, mm-hmm. a playoff contending team? Do I think the Spurs are going to go off and – get 46 to 48 wins to get what, what's needed to get into the plan. I don't. Okay. I think this team has improved, but I like the moves that have been done. First and foremost, they got the right draft pick at number four at Stephon Castle. That's, that's a big deal. 
Secondly, mm -hmm. they're giving Stefan Castle a legend to learn from in Chris Paul. I don't think mm -hmm. a 40-year-old Chris Paul, 39-year-old Chris Paul, is going to go out there and dominate the way that he used to in the regular season like he has the right. past two decades. Chris Paul is going to be the first point guard in NBA history to play for 20 seasons. First one ever. It's never been done before. So I don't expect that, that uh, Chris Paul is going to defeat Father Time by any stretch of the imagination. But keep in mind, who trained Shea Gildas Alexander in Oklahoma yep. City? How did, who, how did SGA get that leap? It was by playing alongside Chris Paul and that legend. So hopefully we get that. They did bring in Harrison Barnes, who, by the way, last two seasons started and played all 82 games. He's yep. a pro's pro. He's a pro's pro. And then you're going to be able to take him and have him mentor a Jeremy Sohan, have him mentor a Victor Wimanyama. These, these pickups of Harrison Barnes, these pickups of, of um, Harrison Barnes and CP3, it's, it may not pay dividends necessarily so much on the court. It's the corporate knowledge that they bring to the rest of the young guys. The corporate knowledge yeah. they bring to Sohan, that they bring to – even to a Vassell. I mean, Vassell's still young enough yeah. to learn. The corporate knowledge that they bring – and I've always talked about the fact that I've, I've had hesitancy about Pop and his age uh, being able to identify with the younger guys. Well, now he's got generals on the floor, a, mm. a, a Chris Paul, a Harrison Barnes, that yeah. can be that, that, that uh, conduit, that can be there to help spread the message to a younger, a younger group. Brian Wright has done a fantastic job this year, trading that number eight pick for a swap in 2030 and a first-round draft pick in 2031 was a yeah. smart thing to do. It also freed up the cap space to go get a Chris mm -hmm. Paul. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I've, I've, given, I've given Brian Wright crap all, for many, many years. This is the year I'll give him flowers. Yeah, you look at what he's done so far. He's preserving the Spurs' future, and that's pretty good. He has not given up, uh, you know, any of any valuable picks or anything like that. He's not mortgaging the future as an out now. Granted, sure, there's not a player to mortgage the future with Lori Marketing, but the point is he's still preserving that, and you got to give him a thumbs up on that. So yes, Gasby, I get what you're trying to say, but as right now the moves that. Brian Wright has made have been pretty solid. But thank you for the comment. We appreciate it. Hey, Jimenez, you're a gambling kind of guy. You love betting yeah. odds and look peeking in what Vegas has to say. So you'll love this one. Next comment is from Nick Matt 35. He says Victor is projected for 23.7 points per game for the season on prize picks. Over or under? Where you at, Jimenez? Are you in the over? You're gonna go the under. I'm gonna go under. Um, I think he's going to be pretty close to it. I think 23.2, 23.4 uh, is, is basically where he'll be at. I mean, then then again, you might say, well, now he's playing with guards in Chris Paul yeah. and Stephon Castle, who might be able to get him the ball better and in and, and a better spacing. So I wouldn't be surprised that he goes over. But if I had to bet it right now, you say, Michael, we got 100 bucks. Uh, I would say that he'd be right around 23.2. 23 sounds about right. I think they're right on where it should be. Uh, the question is, how many rebounds? The question is, how many blocks? Mm -hmm. Is he going to be breaking records this year uh, or, or setting standards that we haven't seen before? Uh, but Wemby's going to have a special year. Again, he has new players to play with. It's going to take some time to mesh with these guys, even though they are veterans in Barnes and in CP3. But then you also have Stefan Castle. This is the best team that uh, Wemby's played for, you know, and uh, it's going to yeah. take a little while, but I can see him. I can see him getting to that 23 point range, but I don't see I don't see him yet going into the 25, 26, 27 range yet. He no, will I'm eventually, take, but I, I don't I don't think this is the year. I'm gonna take the uh, over basically for the same reasons that you gave for the under, because he's gonna play right. with CP3, because he's gonna have a veteran Harrison Barnes, because cumulatively the young Spurs from last year that will be back already got used to playing with him. He's gonna. He filled out his body more. You know, he's getting uh, more playing time right now uh, with the Olympics. I think he's hungry to prove himself. I mean, he said it to close out the season that, that he was not even close to being what he can be himself on the court. Mm -hmm. I think he's gonna come with a chip on the shoulder because of the DPOY snub. Uh, I think he's just gonna be coming out like a beast. You at, you even said it yourself. This is the best team he's played with. You have even Trey Jones who connected on with him the most last season with um, Vassell and him seem to jive. And I think 
all those reasons you gave for him going the under, I think actually would help him push him to the over. I'm going to get him close to about a little over 24, maybe like 24.23. Yeah. Well, we're right in the same range there. I mean, I think, yeah. I think Vegas has it right by a half point in either direction. Yeah. Yeah, I think it'll work out, buddy. But hey, everybody, we thank y'all for leaving some comments here on the Lock YouTube page. We'll keep on reading them as the season continues. He is Mike Jimenez. Make sure to follow my next at MJ Acquired Taste. We got to get him out of here. He has to get to work. Jimenez, what's going on the YouTube page? You heard your show is, or you and Joe Garcia's show is actually taking off big time right now. It has taken off big time, and it, it took a while. The consistency is, is there. Uh, we do a Monday through Friday podcast, 10 a.m. to 1130. But it's okay if you listen beyond that because we don't date it, right? So if you listen at noon, if you listen at 5 p.m., 10 p.m., it's going to be a good show for you. Uh, we're taking off because uh, we're going to hit a milestone more than likely this week of 1,000 YouTube subscribers, which is a big deal because it puts you in the algorithm, puts you in the recommended list through YouTube. Uh, on top of that, you know, only 8.5% of YouTube pages ever hit 1,000 mm -hmm. subscribers. And we're going to be part of that select group. We're excited about it. Uh, we talk sports. We do a lot of pop culture references, movies, music. Uh, we don't talk politics very often because who cares? It's an escape, right? And local yeah. sports talk radio goes away at 10 o'clock. So we have we help fill them, fill in the gaps, and um, it's been fun. And you're on the show a lot. My good my good buddy yep. James Pledger from San Antonio Sports Star is oftentimes on the show. Uh, so it's a fun show. We talk a lot of Spurs, a lot of Cowboys and Texans, UT football. We have a lot going on. We've had a lot of also um, guests coming on, like Goldberg, mm -hmm. uh, the WWE legend, the yep. actor. Uh, we had the Von Erics. We've had, uh, you know, the former quarterback of the UTSA Roadrunners. We've had so many different people come through, and the uh, it is growing. Frank Harris was a big, big part of our show. Yep. Um, it's growing. Again, it's called the Alamo City Sportscast, 10 a.m., Monday through Friday, and it's an hour and a half long, no commercials. There you go. Follow Mike he, on X at MJ Car Chase. He has all the links there to go to the show over on YouTube. Hey, we thank y'all for making a lot of us your first listen every single day. Check us out on iTunes, Spotify, YouTube, Cans5 Plus app, so many other platforms. We'll be back tomorrow. More Spurs talk as the offseason continues. And check out Lockdown Sports Today 24-7 streaming channel only on YouTube. Brought to you by the Lockdown Podcast Network. Go check it out. It's really, really fun. For Jimenez, who is in the heavens right now, apparently. Well, well, he meant us. Can you make it rain at least? Can you make it rain for San Antonio? Oh, I wish I could, man. I wish I could, but it looks good outside. It's nice outside. It's not so stinking yeah. hot. All right, man. He met us. As always, we thank you. So for Mike Jimenez, I am Jeff Garcia. We're going to put a lock on this episode of Lockdown Spurs.